Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Where's My Refund? Tool on irs.gov, irs.gov takes guesswork out of when to expect refunds. IR 2020-157, July 15, 2020, Washington. The Internal Revenue Service reminds taxpayers that one of the best ways to check on their refund is the Where's My Refund, and there's a link to that tool here, tool on the IRS website and the IRS2Go app. There's a link to the IRS2Go app as well. Updated once a day, usually overnight, this useful tool gives taxpayers a projected refund issuance date as soon as it is approved. So it is a nice tool to be using. Note, what you want to do is make sure when you send in the tax return that it has been accepted by the IRS. You can use the tool to check on acceptance and then check on the status, of course, of the refund from that point. If you're using some type of electronic filing software, either with a tax professional or some tax software in and of yourself, such as a TurboTax or a... Um, H&R Block type software, then it'll typically tell you if it's been accepted or not. So you get that acceptance and that's, that's good because that gives you some peace of mind that the return at least has been processed and that should avoid penalties and, in, and uh, interest related to late filing. Then of course you want to go and check your refund. It's updated once a day. So um, it should, uh, you don't only, you only need to check it like maybe once or twice a day. You don't mean to check it all the time because it's going to be updated typically overnight, they're saying. Back to the text. The IRS issues 9 out of 10 refunds in less than 21 days, and the fastest way to get a refund is to use IRS e-file and direct deposit. So IRS direct and direct deposit are links here. Taxpayers should also know they, they can have their refunds divided into up to three separate accounts. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, IRS live phone assistance is extremely limited. So they have very limited phone assistance as well. It's never been great to be on, but it's limited at this point in time. It's okay sometimes. In any case, back to the text. People are encouraged to first check the Where's My Refund, there's a link to that here, tool on the IRS website and the IRS2Go app. Taxpayers can also review the IRS Services Guide, there's a PDF link to that here, which links to additional IRS online services. Please note, ordering a tax transcript will not speed delivery of tax refunds, nor does the posting of a tax transcript to the taxpayer's account determine the timing of the refund delivery. Calls to request transcripts for this purpose are unnecessary. Transcripts are available online and by mail at Get Transcripts. So the transcripts is a great tool to have, but it's not a tool that's going to basically be helping you to speed up uh, you know, the processing of the tax return. Uh, typically. So back to the text. A new necessary items. A few new necessary items. To use Where's My Refund tool, taxpayers will need to enter their social security number tax filing status. That means either single, married, head of household, and exact amount of the tax refund claimed on the return. So you basically want to have your copy of the return in front of you so you could fill those out. Obviously, filing status is going to be on the front page. Your social security number, if you, if you don't have that memorized, it'll be on the tax return, front page of the tax return as well. And then you're going to need the amount of the refund, which will typically be on, you know, the summary of the second page. Back to the text. Taxpayers who file electronically can check where's my refund within 24 hours after they receive their e-file acceptance notification. Taxpayers who file electronically can check where's my refund within 24 hours after they receive their e-file acceptance notification. The, uh, the tool can tell taxpayers when their tax return has been received. And that's a great tool as well. So the where's my refund tool, you're checking obviously when the refund is going to come. That's what the, the name would suggest. But you also can use it to verify that the tax return has been received, which is the key point as to avoiding penalties and interest for the late filing. So it's nice to check on that as well. Uh, when the refund is approved and the date the refund is to be issued. Some refunds may take longer. While the IRS continues to process electronic and paper tax returns, is issue refunds and accept payments, there are delays in processing paper tax returns due to limited staffing. If a taxpayer filed a paper tax return, the return will be processed in the order in which it was received. Do not file a second tax return or call the IRS. So if you're getting a refund, then you probably don't want to be filing a paper tax return because for a long time, the IRS has been trying to move away from this paper tax return thing. They really want to do the thing online. And then the COVID-19 thing happened and now they got really backed up and 
Now they're not doing the paper tax returns as much. So if you're waiting on a refund, then it will take longer typically for the paper tax return to go through. If you're going to pay, if you owe money, then you know maybe you want to send a paper tax return and, uh, and a check with it because that might take longer for them to process it. Although I can imagine the IRS going and opening up the taxes and cashing the check and then not processing, you know. But in any case, it might, in that case, it might not bother you as much if it takes them longer to process it as long as, long as you avoid penalties and interest. But if you're looking for the refund, you want the refund, they owe you money, then you probably want to be electronically filing and electronically uh, electronically filing and giving them your banking information it would be the fastest way to get that refund. Back to the text. Many different factors can affect the timing of a refund. In some cases, a tax return may require additional review. It is also important to consider the time it takes for a financial institution to post the refund to an account or for a refund check to be delivered by mail. Taxpayers who owe. The IRS uh, encourages taxpayers who owe to do a paycheck checkup every year to ensure enough tax is withheld from their pay to avoid an unexpected tax bill. So if you owe money, then you're, they're saying, hey, look, if you owe money, then you might be owing money for next year and you should probably do a paycheck checkup. So remember the, the general rule for the taxes, the IRS would want their money for 2019. They want to get paid during the year. The tax return then being processed in 2020 for the tax year 2019 theoretically should just be an informational return. It should just be saying, hey, look, here's a recalculation of my liability. I've already paid it during the year. No refund, no amount due should be due at that point in time in a perfect world. It's not a perfect world. The tax returns way too complex for that to actually happen. So you have to basically estimate and usually you want to estimate on the high side of payments so that you get a small refund, not because you want the refund necessarily because it makes you happy at tax time, but because you want to avoid penalties and interest related to erring on the other side where, where you pay too little and then you owe penalties and interest on top of the fact that you have a tax bill at the end of the year. So to avoid that, if you owe money in 2019, you want to do a paycheck checkup for 2020 and you can use their paycheck checkup tool, which can help you to, it's basically an estimator tool that you can kind of run an estimate on and then figure out what the withholding should be at this point in time. And then you can change your withholdings with your work if you're a W-2 employee or change your estimated tax payments if you are a sole proprietorship. Now, also note that if you make a change, if you determine that your taxes are you're withholding too little in 2020 and you make a change now, you're probably going to have to make a more significant change in order to cover the tax bill. And then you'll have to change it again in January because then you can lower it back down to what it needs to be, whatever your withholding needs to be in order to be consistent for an entire year to meet whatever the tax liability will be.